Hello, and welcome to this lesson on creating an Eclipse project. We'll create a project for a simple record sorting program. Then we'll see how to get content into a newly created project. And finally, we'll look at some of the many configuration options in Eclipse. We're going to create a simple record sorting program that will sort a data file either by name or ID number. And to keep it really simple, we'll replace spaces in the name field with underscores. The files for this project aren't on the DVD as they're not part of the embedded Linux learning kit. So, download and untar recordsort.tar.gz from the website shown here. Create a new C project and name it Record Sort. By default, the project type is executable empty project. Eclipse tried to build it, but of course there's nothing to build. There are actually two files in the record sort project directory now, .cproject and .project, both of which are XML code describing the project. .project provides configuration information to the base Eclipse platform, while the more extensive .cproject file provides information to CDT. It's not necessary to understand the contents of these files, but it is useful to know they exist. There are basically two ways to get content into a project. You can import existing files into the project, or you can create new ones. We'll show how to import existing files in the demonstration module that follows this lesson. There's one file missing, recordsort.c, the main function. The contents of recordsort.c are in the file recordsort.pdf that's now in your home directory. The idea here is to give you some practice with the features of the Eclipse editor. After you've created recordsort.c, build the project. It fails because a couple of build time errors have been included to give you practice in finding them. In order to debug our record sort application, we have to set up what's called a launch configuration, following the steps shown here. We create a new configuration where the name and project name are already specified. We need to specify an executable by clicking the search project button. In this case, we have to add a command line argument. Then click Apply and Debug. Finally, in the following demonstration, we'll take a look at some of the configuration options under Window Preferences. Clearly, this is far from comprehensive, but this will give you a feel for what's there. Also, these are options you're likely to want to change anyway. We'll start with General Options, Start Up and Shut Down, then look at some editor options. Then we'll look at some C, C++ options. This wraps up our two lessons on Eclipse. I have to say I'm very impressed with Eclipse. To briefly summarize a few of its more compelling features, it's a powerful package of tools with a wide range of capabilities. Additionally, it can be easily extended through new plugins. It has features to support large multi-file projects without imposing unnecessary overhead on small projects. A lot of thought has gone into providing features that enhance productivity, things like content assist in the editor and the various methods of navigating projects. One of the things I especially like is the tight integration of the edit, build, debug cycle. It really speeds development. We will continue to use Eclipse throughout the class for the remaining programming exercises, and I encourage you to consider adopting it in your own work to the extent that you can.